Hi hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to try and sort out our horrible grubby hatch windows. Hatch windows, hatch doors, what they, whatever they're called. <laughs> I'm going to try and take the rotten wood out. I'm going to uh, treat the steel behind it and then time depending, I'm going to try and put a new one in. And I, and time to, what's, what's going on there? Bugs. And time depending, I'm going to put a new piece of wood in as well, but we'll see where we get, how far we get. Supposedly these hatch windows, hatch doors, are an absolute nightmare to replace. I saw some guy on YouTube do it last night, well deck diaries or something, and uh, bloody easy if you ask me. <laughs> but this is me, remember doing it. Someone that has got zero experience with DIY, so this is going to be fun. But it's going to be fun for you anyway, not going to be fun for me. First things first, though, I've quickly got to shoot off and take care of something that's been bugging me. <laughs> We're finally doing it. We're finally manning up. Aren't we, Bex? Yeah. You've got it guys, so I finally manned up and got ourselves a wet vacuum. And I've actually never owned my very own vacuum cleaner, so this is a very exciting and proud moment for me. It's all mine. <laughs> so yeah, we're currently renovating our dream narrowboat, and um, we bought it last July, I think, and with the intention of cruising the entire network for two or three years, but... Um, yeah, it came with a horrendous leak under the floorboards that we weren't told of, so... Yeah, got to fix the bloody thing now, innit? But we're staying positive. We're going to use this as the perfect opportunity to create our perfect home. And hopefully you can help us because we're not that great with all this sort of narrow boaty type stuff. Well, I'm not anyway. Okay, so guys, I'm just making this little section of work up now. So just taking my measurements and then I can kind of line it all up and bisque it together. Same process I did with that bit. Here we go. Another day, another bit of condensation. Do you know how to use one of these vacuum cleaners, but this one's all mine, all mine. <laughs> that day has come where I've had to buy my own vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I'm buying hoovers and things, isn't it? One whole vlog about a wet vacuum. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love a hoover, but they're just not designed for men, are they? I used to be a caretaker, I used to use them all the time. I love them. But I'm a bit of a girl, isn't I? Whoever reads the instructions to a hoover? Dust collection and blowing. Liquid collection. It does sound disgusting, don't it? Yeah. What's going on here, Bex? I'm just taking these metal don't even know what you'd call them, out of the scaffolding board so I don't wreck my, my um, saw when I chop them. There's a diagram on there showing you how to put the, how to attach the hose. <laughs> what? quite handy for you, isn't it? What? Cheeky little bugger. Why do ducks have feathers over their private parts? Go on. To cover their butt quacks. <laughs> That's nearly as good as my why did the chicken cross the road to the playground to get to the other slide. General operation, vacuuming. Place your hands on the handle. This product is designed for light blowing. Okay, let's crack on with the show. The old nozzle. In there. <laughs> I think it goes on here. Well done, screw fix. You've done it again. I can't believe they make all these products like all in-house. Old screw fix. What an amazing group of technicians. <laughs> Very powerful device, my Hoover. Good God, it's half full already. The Titan, don't mess about. Back into the river, back where it belongs. 
Only a tiny bit in there, a bit disappointing. I'm gonna keep my vacuum as clean as possible. Good that is, you don't even need a bilge pump. Don't even need the bilge pump. Just use that every day. Don't need to get anything welded, nothing plated. Just use the Titan. Hey, what, if I had my way, I probably would do that. Saves a lot of the messing about. Problem is, when we're continuously cruising, I don't reckon that's gonna be, it's gonna be using up far too much power, isn't it? So, which is why Bex didn't really wanna buy one. But my treat for the Crowbot team. And if Bex ever wants to use it, she's only gotta ask. Just make sure you ask me, Bex. You know, just ask, and then I'll issue an allowance for you to use it. I was just gonna say, just, if you ever wanna use it, you're more than welcome, just ask. You've only gotta ask, and then you're, you're free to use it. If you ever wanna do anything, just ask. Leave it in the lounge yeah. just for now. I suppose then you can have a, we can have a proper look at it and stuff, can't we, later? And sort of go over all the little fittings that it has. We can read maybe through the instruction manual and stuff, like together. And we just go over how it all works and stuff. Yeah? <laughs> She's not playing! She's not playing! So quickly shoot off just to top up on glue for Bex. No more nails, baby. I have my vacuum, Bex has her glue. We clearly do not mess about, guys. <laughs> so these are our kitchen worktops that Bex is making out of scaffolding, believe it or not. And she's using her clever little biscuits to join them up. She's at it again. The old special finger technique. <laughs> Who needs one of those weird things you used to have at school with the like? Can you render those little, they'd have like a little, they're like a little paddle. Hopefully we can sort of force it a little bit. I'm so enjoying this. Measured it. Clamp the little beauties together, then sit back and wait for them to dry, I suppose. And we're slowly becoming that boat with all the crap on the roof. I mean, I think that bit's part of the toilet. Ugh. Right, onto the beautiful hatches. Well, our horrible rotten hatches. And these are my tools. And here is the guy who's probably gonna completely bugger this all up. I don't actually know how the hell done in the first place. It looks like could be some screw heads there. But I don't really know what the screws would be latching onto. They are screws actually. Got a lovely hatch doors. Every boat's different, that's the puzzle. You might not be able to get nearly anything out with these ugger duggers. They're really, really good. Problem is the operator isn't very good. <laughs> it was moving but it wasn't actually moving the screw. It's a problem when you haven't done much stuff like this before. You've got to try, haven't you? But I completely bugger that first screw up. A proper professional, how to change your hatch, hatch doors, the professional way, the crowbot way. Look, there's, can you see? There are these little pins in there, which is obviously what the screw goes into. Not tall like the guy from World Egg Diaries. That screw's going in here. I'm thinking if I just prise that one off, and that will give us a bit more of a better indication to what the rest of the ones on the boat are like, and we can go from there maybe. Some sort of peephole. Definitely ain't shut in now, is it? The screws look welded in. Are they even screws, you ask? <laughs> if you wanted hatches, I gave a five. Now they're all f Good God. Look. Here we go, it's about to happen.
Get me old wire brush on there. Ah, bloody thing! Get off! Bloody nightmare hatches. Bloody bastard thing! Get off! going to bend them back into shape and try and reuse them, recycle them if we can. It's a joke. <laughs> no chance of that. Well, the door's shut a little easier. I think it was the most professional way of getting them off. Hello, old friend. Safety first, always. So, this is probably where you want the old wire brush drill thing. A bit more, that ain't taking much off at all. Smurf it up again. Well, I'm gonna, but you know, you're working outside, but when you start trying to get this rust off, it goes bloody everywhere. So, gonna attempt the old wire brush that you put in the end of the drill. I've never used one of these ones before. This'll be fun. Sharp, isn't they? When have you ever seen a Smurf bleed? I'm not even sure this is going to go, to be honest, but we've got the old... One done, and on to the next side. I mean, even though this little wire brush drill works really well, I actually prefer the handheld one is. Good little smurf, eh? I think we're done with those. This bottom bit was the worst. I think the idea with the wire brushes is that you get the main sort of top layer of the rust off. And then we can apply the aqua steel, which is like a rust repellent. And that will actually turn the rust in a sort of hardener sort of thing. It's a bit, a bit mad how it all works, but um, it actually works in your favour then. I'd like to uh, get rid of all the old paint that the old previous seller, previous owner, because it looks like he's just painted over rust, so eventually I would like to get into that as well, really. I don't want to hide rust. I want to repel it. Okay, so try and aquasteal some of these hatch doors, and then I think we're going to epoxy over them too, which I don't think is what everyone does, but I think we're going to do it just because we think it sort of helps give it a little bit extra protection. So correct us if we're wrong in the comments. <laughs> Our best friend, aquasteal. In it. Start with a little bit. You try and not just. Well, that was sort of wet. Yeah, you got too much in there. Yeah, way too much. I just put a drizzle in. I did. Lick it. No, I'm just get. Oh God, it's all run down the back. Okay, so leave that on there for about four hours and then give it another little coating. Right, so have another check under here. See what the water situation's like. See if there's something that the Titan needs to be made aware of. Titan's the name of the wet vac, in case anyone missed it. Someone on our comments was saying that surely the condensation was created from the water that had got in there at the first place, which is a very good point. So um, since then we've sealed it up and then we saw all this water in there, like growing and growing. It's a little bit damp in there, but there's no sort of water slushing around. I did speak to Fox's Marina the other day on the phone. They're going to have a quick look at it when, they, when we get the boat out for blacking in uh, June. Bex also contacted our surveyor that's going to survey the whole of the boat. And he actually said it's better to do a, a check on the bow thruster whilst it's in the water actually. So we can sort of check all the fittings and stuff a bit easier than having to throw extra water into it. He knows what he's doing anyway. At least someone knows what they're doing, eh? Any future problems in the bow thruster area? We've obviously got this little bad boy. He don't mess about. 
A beautiful device. Might take him on a walk later around the marina. <laughs> And this, what you see, ladies and gentlemen, is the lock that is preventing us to go anywhere at the moment because there's loads of maintenance being done on it. And we're meant to be getting the boat out for blacking in June, July. Um, they've said this might go on a few more months, so we can't even get it up to the bloody marina in March anyway if we wanted to. There you go, look. <laughs> Supposedly they're still building these things in the factory, but we'll see, you know, we'll be all right. So another morning, another crowbot task. It rained for the first time quite heavily last night since we've sealed up the area on the top and also since we sucked out all the water. Now it was still a little bit sort of damp in there. I would have liked to have kept it a little bit drier, but it's worth having a little look down there just to see, I mean, if water would have been coming in from the top now, I imagine it would have really, there should be some sort of appearance of water, I suppose. <laughs> it's probably more fun for you guys if there's water in there, isn't it? Horrible lot. <laughs> you just want to see the disasters. Ooh, looks extra dry. I haven't even looked yet. That is completely dry. First things first though, let's get the Grinches off. So I would like to dry that out really. Beck suggested that we use the old Pampers. I said throw a heater in there maybe to dry it out. Beck's things, the dehumidibidibur fire would uh, work a lot better. I think sealing it up on the top there has definitely helped because it was really pouring down last night. So far, so good. I'm gonna go and maybe get some nappies in the front there. Am I all right to get some nappies down the front there? And do your little trick with trying to dry it out as well as possible and then maybe get the dehumidifier fire in there. My head's not small enough to get in there. The brain is too large. I cleaned it all out and got rid of most of the moisture and sort of wet, grubby stuff in there. Um, I'm gonna lie some down in there as well. I think that's a good idea. We lie some throughout there and then come back to it maybe in the morning and see if any more's collected up. We've got the pampers in there, all ready for the absorption to start taking place. Very technical operation, all this. Okay, because I don't have a biscuit jointer, what I'm doing is using the, the multi-tool to, to make little kind of holes in the sides of the scaffolding that I can embed my biscuits in and then join the two, well, three scaffold boil boards together. So I'm having to make these cuts and then dig out the sort of fleshy bit in the middle. Going against all those lovely people in the comments that wanted to lend you a special biscuit machine. What's that? A couple of people, yeah, wanted to give you a little biscuit device. Oh, thank you for the um, offers, guys. And again, our lost little goose. He's always there by himself. We are quite worried about him. Gonna pop another little coat on there of the old aqua steel just quickly this morning. And they don't look bad actually. This aqua steel will actually turn the rust, like I say, into a hardener, so these will be fine. This seemed to be the worst of it. Oh, soaking wet from being left out in the rain last night, but love a marigold, but there's one thing I can't stand, some wet marigold. <laughs> you don't want to get this aqua steel on your hands really. It starts changing the color of your hands too. It starts de-rusting your own skin. You should never pour this aqua steel back into the container supposedly. So I poured it in a fresh container, put a lid on it. Seems perfect, seems good. Little bit, cheeky bit on there from where it was rusting as well. Why not? <laughs> so it's a water-based um, rust repellent, this, and it's non-hazardous, so sounds good. So I don't think it's very harmful also, so you don't have to wear masks and stuff. I don't think, I think that's what it means. Again, no anti-rust repellent expert here. I will be a pro anti-ruster by the end of it, don't you worry. Don't quite know what we're going to do about these screws yet. I wonder if the easiest solution to that would possibly be just to grind them off anyway and then start from fresh. 
put the new wood on and then maybe like the guy from the Wild Deck Diaries, I keep talking about the guy from the Wild Deck Diaries, don't I? But I drill a hole in here and put some real big ass screws in it that'll hold it on. Well,